Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader with your daily market update. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. Uh, and before we get started uh, today, uh, we're going to dive into the indicators a little bit. I uh, just want to um, show people how they can uh, get the indicators for free uh, if they're not already familiar with it. Uh, you can just go to TradingView dot com and if you're not familiar with it it's just T R A D I N G V I E W dot com and you'll see the search box come up right here at Trading View. You make an account for free if you want or uh, you know they have paid accounts with uh, different benefits as well. But if you just go to people and then you just search uh, one word turbo J diesel and Give that a search and you'll see this image right here pop up and then you can just go over to um, like scripts right here and you'll see the scripts pop up here and you know there's some great scripts right here uh, it's the ones I use obviously in uh, different videos uh, in this specific video we're gonna be using the uh, TJ diesel the uh, jewel thief and then uh, we're also gonna be using the uh, TD MACD uh, which is right here as well um, and then uh, you'll also see the uh, parabolic SAR with binary pivots um, in uh, in the videos as well. So uh, and you can give those like a like or a favorite, whatever, and uh, you know use them like quick tab whenever you want. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show those, and they are free. Um, so here we have uh, the indicators pulled up on the uh, chart. Here, this is our binary pivots. Uh, this is our jewel thief. And this is the uh, TD MACD, and essentially what we do is like combine these three indicators. They're going to tell us some of the same things, but also uh, different things. And then like you know we'll be able to use them uh, when they're all giving us signals to tell us like the signals more reliable. Um, also like versus if just one of them is giving us a signal. Uh, so in this instance now, uh, essentially what we're going to talk about is. Um, you know these hard signals right here I was talking about this hard sell signal we got the other day uh, when I was watching it and everybody else was getting faked out but we were getting de denied um, essentially by this 200 EMA um, and uh, we basically were poking up here and uh, all of a sudden we were getting the sell was printing but in live you'll see like it will pop up but as the price moves it might like show up and then go away for a minute and then show back up and then go away for a minute and then like until the actual candle prints like depending on the time frame you're on it won't like print the S yet so that's what I was saying about it was like sh popping up and then coming off um, but essentially I'm going to show you why like this sell signal is much more reliable than say like for instance this buy signal and why it was so important that we took this long out of this area and uh, that we like trailed our stop loss because all it took was one candle to just wipe that out and the reason that you know this signal is so much more reliable the sell signal then these buy signals, although they have been reliable and you would have made like, you know, a nice profit off of them. If you would have took like, for instance, uh, you know, this buy signal right here, you could have still like pretty reliably took profits on like three, three and a half percent move. Like before you got stopped out on this dump essentially. Um, but if you took, you know, obviously the sell signal right here, even if you took it after that point in time, you could have very easily gotten like, you know, a 12 to you know maybe 13 14 percent uh, on Bitcoin and then again same situation right here if you took this buy right here and uh, you know let's say you bought down in this range and you took like the same trade I did you locked in like pretty reliably like three to you know four percent profit basically uh, before that trade got wiped out but if you didn't put their trailing stop loss in you know you're right back at your entry point so you could essentially just retake the same trade again if you're convinced it's going up so that's why it's important to try your stop loss you lock in that profit and then you can make up your own mind again do I want to take this trade again or not so but the reason these are so much more reliable is the predominant trend and so if we're on the four hour time frame like we are right now and we're trading like some scalps or whatever or we're doing like a little bit of like day or swing trading or we're looking for an entry on a shorter time frame for a longer time frame trade we need to first switch up to a longer time frame and identify like the overall predominant trend okay so in this case now what we're looking at is in our predominant trend here you know we've obviously been selling off for a while so it's very clear that you know since essentially like 
mid-February that we've been in a downtrend like consistently like selling off. So until we can confirm that we're back in an uptrend, we're going to assume that this downtrend is going to continue, okay? So even though we're at like a key support level right here, if we take like a scalp move or something like that, hoping that we get like a test back up to like the uh, 200 moving average at like 8600, let's say, uh, you know, assuming that's what our TA is telling us is going to happen, like all reality, we expect like that move up to underperform and potentially get sold into like before that that uh, measured move would ever complete because we're in an overall like downtrend and if we need to identify that using our indicators you know because you're not good at identifying that it's very simple essentially we're going to use our shortest time frame moving average uh, so in this case it's going to be our red and our yellow and when the red crosses above the yellow right here and then price action is above that red as long as price action is above the red and the reds above the yellow we're considering ourselves to be still in an uptrend so here we're potentially like you know gonna threaten that uptrend because if we start closing below the yellow it's gonna drag this down here and we're gonna potentially get that cross cross but we never actually lost it so we stayed in a confirmed uptrend the whole time and then like I said as long as we stayed above it we're in a confirmed uptrend but then finally we lost it once we got the cross here and price action is below those moving averages we're gonna continue to drag it down we attempted here to save that cross to bounce back up and continue the uptrend and just have that be basically like a retrace uh, but it failed and we sold off but at no point in time did we ever confirm that we were back in an uptrend so we knew from this point here at 9600 we're in a downtrend so at that point in time you should have already been like in you know essentially like you know positioned for the the downtrend so you're going to be taking trends predominantly to the downside so you're looking for shorts you're trying to get out of long positions as where when they're in a predominant uptrend you're obviously looking for longs and now if we go down here next to the um, TJD uh, um, jewel thief right here we'll see that we did get like our sell signal the hard sell ass right here and then again right here and um, you know again that's why it's important to use multiple indicators because you'll see here we got the hard buy right here and then we got the buy again right here but if you took the hard buy right here, we actually came down below that. So if you had your stop loss positioned poorly or you got an entry at a bad level, that came down and took you out of the trade. And if you didn't re-enter the trade on this one, you never actually got the hard buy. So that's why it's important to use multiple indicators because here you would have got the buy, obviously accumulation zone, but you didn't get the hard buy signal. But then obviously when you see the cross here, you're going to confirm we're in an uptrend and you're going to take that position. And then again, same situation here, why these indicators work so well together. We're in a confirmed uptrend, obviously. You took the buy out of this area. Either way, you're in a massive profit by the time you get up to the 200 moving average. And then you get this sell signal right here. If you take that sell signal at the 200, which actually is where I took my sell signal, um, you know, that's fine. You obviously lock in your profits. That's great. Um, you know, but you would have missed out on the remainder of this move right here. And the way you would know you know obviously that the move was going to continue as once you were back above the red or you stay in that continuation because you never actually cross those over or again if you look down to the TJD TD MACD you'll see we were in like the blue uptrend the entire time um, so that that's why these indicators work so well together and how they're useful together uh, again this is not financial advice I'm not your financial advisor uh, these markets are extremely volatile uh, you can use these on any um, markets they are tuned specifically for like Bitcoin and crypto markets um, and again they are all available for free uh, on TradingView as well so uh, and then uh, you know obviously you can see just with those two moving averages and then like you know these indicators how they all work together but now so so essentially we've determined we're in an uptrend through this area here so we're looking for the cells to be less reliable and then obviously like at some point in time we get that cell up in here we're already obviously looking for potentially the trend to be ending and uh, you know obviously the TJD parabolic SAR is giving us like the red downtrend as well because we took out like the green pivot point up here so you have a lot of things basically telling us uh, that the trend is switching over up here at the top um, but essentially if we look down here at the TJD TD MACD uh, you'll see this area is like shaky there's like you basically like indecision going on but essentially once this starts flipping over and you start getting the uh, green on the histogram you know and you start approaching towards this moving average 
um, you know, you can potentially say, like, you know, looking for entries, uh, especially in confluence with the other indicators. Uh, once the blue slope flips over, or actually, I'm sorry, once the histogram is above it, that's another uh, point of entry. And then finally, once the slope uh, flips over to blue, uh, that's your third point. And, uh, you know, you want to be obviously risk on because you're confirmed in an uptrend. And then as far as, like, the downtrend, uh, you want to be cautious, obviously, and look for take profit areas. Once the histogram flips over, I used to, I like to use like two histograms, um, or uh, you know, obviously, once price, uh, once the histogram crosses down below the moving average slope line, it's going to start dragging the slope down. And then the third and final one, obviously, is once the slope flips to negative, it's going to turn red. And uh, at that point in time, you should be obviously like risk out. And again, you'll see that these things line up together you're gonna get like your moving average crosses at the same time like that slope is gonna flip um, pretty much so you know you can use like some of these indicators more more in confluence with each other and then there's gonna be other situations where they're basically just gonna tell you like the same thing so it's important that you understand like what you're using and what it's telling you and why you're using it and why it's telling you that um, and then also I do want to explore a little bit more with this because uh, some people don't understand like what exactly is going on with the dots. Um, basically, what's going on is the green and red dots are telling you the trend, the overall like trend on that time frame. So like here on the daily, um, you know they're telling you like once they're red here that we're in a daily downtrend, and then the green means like it's been taken out by the price action, so we're like flipping over the trend, potentially reversing. Um, and then in this case, obviously, like it was a fake out. And then we sold back off and start like continuing down. And then like the purple dots are like a resistance essentially. And the blue dots are like support. So as we build like that support here on the bottom and we start to like diverge away from it, we're taking out like the resistance uh, on the way up here, the purple. And it's continually like moving up. And then we form like this trading zone essentially where the purple becomes like the resistance and the blue becomes like the support. And as we move down, it kind of like stair steps in that direction. And then again, it's going to point in like the direction of the overall trend. Uh, and then we have various moving averages um, on here as well. Uh, the best way to tell like the predominant trend, obviously, is uh, your two shorter time frame moving averages. 